Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a quick physical overview of the MSI EK collaboration that is the Z690 Torpedo EKX uh, Motherboard Plus Monoblock Bundle. Uh, this was sent to me by MSI and EK. Like, EK sent me some water cooling uh, equipment for, like, testing this out. MSI actually sent the motherboard bundle itself. And uh, I agreed to take a look at this because it's a monoblock bundle that I don't think is completely stupid. Right, like historic. If you watch my channel for long enough, you're probably fully aware of the fact that I think the, especially the ultra high-end motherboard monoblock combos are, in my opinion, completely and utterly stupid. And there's three reasons for that. One, they're insanely expensive. Two, water cooling the VRM on a Z6 high-end Z690 motherboard is literally pointless. There's like, those are motherboards that will ha run, have perfectly acceptable VRM temperatures even if you take the VRM heatsinks off and run them in a zero airflow environment. So, water cooling the VRM has to be, like, one of the most, like, utterly pointless. I have no idea why that has taken off. Um, it's like, if you water cooled the VRM on a low-end motherboard, that would make sense. Because the low-end VRMs aren't very efficient, they run really hot, you know, it's like, it might actually benefit from water cooling. High-end motherboard with VRM water cooling is just kind of like, like, why? Why are you doing that? Like, you you would sooner see bigger benefits from water cooling your RAM. Um, because RAM is actually, like, RAM actually, to some extent, uh, cares about operating temperatures. Unlike VRM components, which, as long as they're under 100 degrees Celsius, literally couldn't care less. Um, anyway, uh, so... Yeah, so that's point two. And point three, typically the high-end motherboard monoblock, like monoblocks are form-fitting, as in they only fit one specific motherboard. And one of the things I like about sort of water cooling is the part where you can just like reuse the radiator, reuse the pump, reuse the reservoir, and the water. Like you can, like with the exception of GPU, like full cover GPU blocks, you can just sort of keep reusing the same parts over and over and over again. And this right here sort of addresses all three of those complaints that I have for the typical high-end monoblock bundle. One, this is at a perfectly sensible price. Like, the bundle is listed on the... Well, last I checked, this was listed on the EK web store for 335 euro, which really isn't that different from just buying this motherboard... Like, buying a Z690 Torpedo and a EK CPU block separately. So there's not, like, some ridiculous extra cost for getting a uh, form-fitting monoblock, because this isn't a form-fitting monoblock, and I do think that's actually a benefit, because this, like, it has, this is more functional than a form-fitting water block, because you could realistically get this to fit on other motherboards. Um, water cooling the VRM on this board is still probably pretty pointless, but we'll see. Um, I, I do kind of plan to run Prime 95 on it for a very long time, if necessary. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how that works out. But um, I don't really... Like, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Certainly, at least on a motherboard like this, there's going to be more benefit to water cooling the VRM than on a really, really high-end motherboard. Like, this does use a 6 layer PCB, so... I don't know, maybe with, you know, a very high current draw for a very long sustained period of time, we might... Uh, get the board to actually heat up somewhat. I still can't imagine that it would actually have issues uh, powering a 12th gen chip, because the thing is 12th gen chips just don't pull that much power, even if you're slamming them with Prime 95. Like, they're, the new Intel manufacturing process is better than what they had for 14 nanometers, so, you know, go figure. <laughs> the CPUs pull less power. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, that basically addresses everything. It's just like, it's cheaper, um, water cooling the VR, like, the water cooling the VRM is still pretty pointless, but you could also fit this onto other, uh, boards, because this isn't form-fitting, right? Like, uh, basically, this will fit on any motherboard, where if you take off the VRM heatsinks, the VRM component themselves, uh, VRM components are low enough. And on the vast majority of motherboards, the VRM comp like, the inductors, right, which would be the collision hazard, are not are typically not much taller than the capacitors themselves, or a lot of the time they're actually lower than the capacitors. And so if you have a motherboard where the inductors are roughly the same height as the capacitors, or lower than the capacitors, well, this will actually fit. Like, it'll fit on that board. It won't work properly, because obviously the, the way this is designed to work is that you have these VRM heat sinks, and then you have these thermal pads. The thermal pads go onto... Uh, those, you know, like, these contact ledges right here, and so then the VRM, heat, so basically heat from the uh, MOSFETs travels into the VRM heatsink, then it travels into the thermal pad, which then, uh, you know, 
transfers that heat into the base pool. I guess you could, it's not really a cold plate, but well, I guess it kind of is. Anyway, that transfers the heat into the uh, monoblock. Um, and so this does rely on the VRM heatsink to actually get the heat directly from the MOSFETs into uh, the block. However, I suspect on a lot of higher end motherboards, um, the VRM doesn't, like the VRM produces so little heat and the inductors are probably in like low enough thermal, like the thermal resistance of the inductors is probably low enough that if you only thermal pad the inductors to this and don't even do anything, like don't direct, like don't thermal pad the MOSFETs at all, I think that might still work out with acceptable VRM temperatures, especially because the way I would see, like where I would see this as being sort of a benefit is like, let's say you buy this bundle and then someday you decide to upgrade to a better motherboard well, um, you know, if the motherboard has a better VRM, it probably won't need the heat sinks anymore, assuming that you can get at least some heat dissipate, like get some of the heat into the, into the mono block. So yeah, and I will be testing that. Um, I'm not sure which board I'm going to use for that test yet, but I definitely want to test that out because, uh, I, I think that'll, that'll like, that, that is one of the things I'm really interested in, to, in checking with this. Um, so that's sort of how this works is basically... You know, uh, this just makes contact with the VRM heat sinks and it sucks the heat out of the VRM heat sinks. Now, obviously that's not as efficient a thermal transfer path as what you would get with a form fitting, you know, heavily like form fitting uh, full like monoblock. However, these are VRMs. They really don't produce a lot of heat. The main reason VRMs run hot is because they're sort of neglected in terms of like cooling. Uh, they're in literally like the worst possible location in, in the entire system as far as airflow is concerned. Um, and so that's typically why VRMs run hot. Like VRMs don't get hot because they actually produce a lot of heat. They get, a, get, they get hot because typically they don't get much cooling. Um, and water cooling is like insanely more effective than air. Um, so even with really suboptimal thermal transfer where you're going, you know, thermal pad, VRM heat sink, second thermal pad, mind you, you can probably tell that this, uh, base plate is not the same material as the actual block. That's because this is stainless steel. Stainless steel, not exactly known for being the world's best thermal conductor, but like it's still metal, which is significantly mo more thermally conductive than the vast, like definitely than air and most other materials. And then of course we do have water cooling on top of that. So this will still, like this should still drastically reduce the VRM uh, operating temperatures. Cause the thing is the VRM doesn't produce a lot of heat. You don't actually have to deal with a lot of heat. You just have to deal with it at all, which is uh, what, you know, like usually it's not, uh, usually it's not really a thing that cooling systems concern themselves with. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that. So that's, that's how it's supposed to cool the VRM. Uh, for the actual CPU cooling, we have EK's uh, Velocity 2 uh, cooling system. So this is the what they use on their current like high like best CPU block that they make. So the CPU cooling should be really good. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how that works out because uh, uh, yeah, and that's the other reason why I think it was cool that you could potentially reuse this because it's like why would you want to like if you've already bought this with a really really good co CPU cooling system. It just feels like kind of a waste to replace this, right? If you ever decide to replace the motherboard. Now, admittedly, this will only fit LGA 1700 boards, but that's still better than, you know, having to, well, I don't know how long we're gonna, like how long Intel's gonna stick to the LGA 17 whole space, 1700 whole spacing. Um, I'd imagine it would probably last for at least uh, another g two generation. Uh, so there's 13th gen. I think it will last at least until 15th gen. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Um, so that's the CPU cooling side of it. Um, and then for the mounting hardware, you get this very thick steel plate. So this is nice to see, right? This is like five millimeters of steel, as far as I can tell. And you get these standoffs. Now I do have a complaint for the mounting hardware, which is, so on one hand, it is really cool that EK managed to come up with mounting hardware where it's actually spring loaded, right? Like, so yeah, you've got spring, like this is a proper, like, like it's a basically proper CPU block mounting hardware. I've seen some motherboard mono blocks where they just hard bolt the motherboard, like the water block to the motherboard. 
And that probably works fine, but it's like, you know, I do de definitely prefer this. Because this does ensure, you know, this does ensure better, uh, more consistent mounting pressure with the springs and the uh, screws. Now, the one downside to this approach is that, um, now, you can't see it on my hardware here anymore, but when you first get this, the spring is actually a bit longer than the screws, and these rods, these rods, well, the standoffs that they screw, like, the screws screw into are a bit short, so the initial assembly is really difficult, because those are eight, like, these are eight kilogram screws, and, I mean, springs, and you need to compress them during the initial installation because the screw just doesn't reach. Um, so yeah, that that I really hope EK figures something out for that because that is really annoying to deal with during the initial installation. That the springs are really really heavy and they are a bit too long in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe in the future they'll they'll shorten them. And then uh, what else is there? Um, yeah, so you've got the back plate mounting plate. Uh, I kind of hope that this will actually spread to other motherboard manufacturers because it would be trivial for, you know, Asus and Gigabyte to just adopt this uh, ledge design and just have, like, potentially I could see this being adopted on every motherboard. Like, there's really no reason that you couldn't just have this on every single motherboard and then just have, like, a trim piece to cover it up because, I, th you know, some people might think it's not too aesthetically pleasing to have these flat surfaces just kind of sitting there, but I could realistically, you could have like an RGB strip or something that goes over it. I don't really care. It's, I think this is neat. Um, and making it more, uh, you know, more reusable or more co like compatible with more motherboards, I think, or properly compatible with more motherboards, I think would be really neat. So yeah. Anyway, the last thing I want to show you is some thermal paste spread patterns because uh, that's the whole reason I figured out that the mounting hardware is actually really obnoxious to deal with. Um, so let's take a look at that. So, yeah, and it does a good job. Like, as you can see, now this is with a washer mod, um, so I do have washers under the loading mechanism. And the block does have a very slight curve to it, which is standard for CPU blocks, as in the block is very slightly uh, convex. And... Uh, so the center of the block is ever so slightly taller, and that's normal for, for CPU blocks to do that. And as you can see with the washer mod, like the, so theoretically I shouldn't really need to do the washer mod with, uh, with a block, like with a water block like this. But the way I see the washer mod is like, I've never had it do any, like worst case scenario, it does nothing. Best case scenario, it helps. That's sort of been my experience with it. I've not had any issues with it, so I've just been washer modding every single motherboard I have at this point. Um, but yeah, this thermal paste spread pattern looks like perfectly good. Like there's, we don't see any like excessive amount of thermal paste building up at the center of the CPU, which is obviously the part we actually care about. The outer edges of the IHS is kind of like, and eh, whatever. Um, it's also worth noting that when I was uh, removing the water block, this thing is kind of awkward to get like lift straight off the CPU. So I ended up tilting it to one corner, which is why there's like a bald patch in that area. Anyway, um... Yeah, so, oh, and I guess the last thing to address is that the stainless steel plate, this is perfectly fine for water cooling loops. If you've ever used, like, the mo a lot of CPU, well, I'm not going to say all, because, well, <laughs> a lot of high-end CPU water blocks do use stainless steel jet plates for injecting the water into the micro fins. Um, and so this stainless steel plate right here, which, like, that just makes direct contact with the water flowing through your loop, that's perfectly fine. Like, if you've ever built a loop with at least EK CPU blocks, you already have stainless steel in, in your loop, because EK's been using stainless steel jet plates for years and years and years. So, yeah, th this, like, like, yeah, it's not copper, but, uh, or, or not nickel-plated copper, but this is perfectly fine. That's a uh, pretty normal material to see in a water cooling loop, and, uh, Oh yeah, it does come with a tube of thermal paste, but I will not be using that just because I have a bunch of my own thermal paste that I prefer to use. So yeah, anyway, um, that's it for the overview. I, I think it's really cool. Um, and I really hope that, you know, EK can get more motherboards to, more motherboard manufacturers to adopt this like VRM heatsink shape. Cause that's all it really needs. Like there's nothing else you have to do. It's just like, you just put a ledge on your VRM heatsink and bam, now you're compatible with this monoblock system. And 
it's not ridiculously expensive and it should deliver great cooling performance and that's like all I care about. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anyway, um, that's everything for this video. So big thank you to EK for sending this over. I will be doing a PCB breakdown of this next, uh, no, I'll probably do the testing first just so that I don't screw up the thermal pads. Um, but uh, yeah, so big thank you to EK and MSI for, for sending this over, and uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel. So it would be much appreciated if you check them out. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.